the reaction of 15 gram of an NPO sample of calcium carbonate uh, with excess hydrochloric acid of concentration one mole per decimeter cube is used to investigate the rate of your reaction and then we are given the balanced uh, equation for the reaction and then it goes on to say that uh, the volume of CO2 produced is measured at regular intervals and then uh, we have uh, the sketch uh, with uh, the volume of the CO2 on the y-axis and the time on the x-axis and then the first question uh, 5.1 says uh, define the term reaction rate we know that uh, the reaction rate is the change in concentration of the products per unit time the change in concentration of the products per unit time or the change in concentration of the reactions per unit time so that is given by uh, the reaction rate equals to the change in the concentration of the products uh, per unit time or the change in the concentration of the reactants per unit time i hope you get that and then 5.2 says uh, give a reason why the gradient of the graph decreases between t2 and t3 uh, this is the part uh, we're talking about that i just highlighted in yellow on the left hand side um, the question is saying give a reason why the gradient of the graph decreases between t2 and t3 um, because now we are t2 and we're going to t3 uh, the amount of the reactants is getting depleted right so uh, from t2 to t3 the gradient is decreasing because uh, the amount of the reactants is getting depleted and the reaction rate is going down right so uh, the amount uh, is getting the amount of the reactants uh, is getting depleted and as a consequence uh, the reaction rate is going down and then we can move to 5.3 uh, we have 5.3.1 and then it says changes in the graph between t1 and t2 are due to temperature changes within the reaction mixture and then 5.3.1 says is this uh, is the reaction exothermic or endothermic the reaction is exothermic it's exothermic why are we saying that it's exothermic because uh, the temperature change is within right and then from t1 and t2 the reaction rate increases okay so let me go a bit deeper on that and further try and explain the concept so in an exothermic reaction uh, there's a temperature change within right the temperature within increases and then we know that um, if we increase the temperature in a reaction the reaction rate goes up right and then from t1 to t2 uh, we have a very uh, steep gradient which shows that uh, the reaction rate is high right so the only time a, reac a reaction mixture uh, will increase uh, its internal uh, temperature it's if uh, the reaction is exothermic and then let's move ahead and go to uh, 5.4 uh, 5.4 says uh, the percentage purity of the sample is 82.5 percent and then uh, calculate the value of x on the graph uh, assuming that the gas is collected at uh, 25 degrees celsius so we have uh, t equals to 25 degrees celsius and the molar gas volume uh, vm equals to uh, 24,000 uh, centimeter cube um, so we're supposed to calculate um, the volume of co2 at x uh, you can see that at x 
uh, that's where the graph start flattening out, right? So what does what what does the graph flattening out tells us? It tells us that at x the reaction is complete, right? But then um, we have um, Ca uh, CO3 uh, calcium carbonate plus two HCl, right? We know that the HCl is in excess, so the reaction will complete when um, the calcium carbonate is depleted. So we cannot uh, use, uh, I'm sorry, I wrote HC instead of HCl. We cannot use uh, the number of moles of HCl to determine the number of moles of CO2 because the HCl is in excess. Even after the reaction is depleted, um, we still have HCl. But then we can use the number of moles of uh, calcium carbonate uh, to determine uh, the number of the corresponding moles of CO2 uh, that we're going to have. And then after we find the number of moles of CO2, we can then uh, convert that to the volume and determine the value of X. So uh, we're going to start by uh, calculating uh, the number of moles of uh, calcium carbonate because uh, we have the mass right and uh, the percentage purity so the first thing we are going to do uh, we're going to say that uh, the mass uh, that's uh, reacted um, is equal to uh, the mass initial multiplied by uh, the percentage purity right so that will be equals to we know that uh, the initial mass is 15 uh, grams uh, multiplied by 82.5 percent uh, which is going to give us so um, 15 uh, multiplied by 82.5 um, percent uh, that gives me 12.375 grams so that's the mass of calcium carbonate that reacted. And now I can convert this mass to the number of moles. And then from there, I can then find the number of moles of uh, CO2 produced, which I'll therefore be able to find the volume, uh, which is the X we are interested in. So uh, we know that the number of moles uh, equals to the mass divided uh, by the molar mass. What is the mass? The mass is what we just determined right now, which is 12.375 uh, uh, gram. And then we're supposed to find at uh, the molar mass of uh, calcium carbonate. So uh, let me pull up uh, my periodic table and see uh, what that leads us to. So for for calcium, uh, we have the a molar mass of 40, and then for carbon, uh, that's 12, so that's plus 12, and then for oxygen, uh, that is 16, uh, but then we have three oxygen atoms, so that's 16 times 3, uh, which is going to be 12,375 uh, divided by uh, 40 plus 12, that's 52. That's 16, 32, 48. So we have uh, 52 plus uh, 48. So we just have uh, 12,375 divided by 100. Yeah, which is giving me a 0 0.12375 uh, moles, right? Of uh, calcium carbonate. And now we can uh, relate the number of moles of calcium carbonate to the number of moles of CO2 using our balance equation. We know that uh, the number of moles of uh, the calcium carbonate uh, divided by the number of moles of CO2 uh, will be equals to uh, 1 uh, divided by 1, right? Uh, 1 being uh, the balancing coefficient in our balanced equation we can see that we just have <coughs> one we don't have a number but we know that we have one there on calcium carbonate and then on co2 
uh, is also true. For the number of moles of uh, of a calcium carbonate, we say that it's 0 0.12375 divided by the number of moles of CO2. And then this is just equals to 1 divided by 1, right? So the number of moles of CO2 equals to uh, 0 0.12375. Um, moles. So now we have determined uh, the number of moles of uh, CO2. We can then find uh, the volume of CO2. But then how do we find the volume? We know that you can determine the number of moles uh, by dividing uh, the volume by uh, the molar gas volume, right? So we have n equals to V divided by uh, Vm. We know what the number of moles is. That's 0 0.12375 um, uh, equals to uh, the volume divided by the molar gas volume, which is uh, 24,000. So if we cross multiply the two, we can then uh, determine uh, our volume, uh, the value of x. So we're gonna get uh, v equals to uh, 0 0.12375 uh, multiplied by 24,000. And then let me put that in my calculator real quick and see what I get. Uh, multiply by 24,000. Uh, that is giving me uh, 2,270. Uh, centimeter cube. So uh, the value of x uh, for our equation uh, that is uh, 2,970 uh, centimeter cube. So um, let's carry on and do 5.5. 5.5 uh, uh, says how will the reaction rate change if 15 gram of a pure sample of a calcium carbonate Initially, uh, the mass that was pure was uh, 12.375 grams. Now the mass that is pure uh, is 15 grams. So what will happen to the uh, to the reaction rate? Uh, the reaction rate will increase. And then 5.6 says, explain why you say it is increasing using the collision theory. So we know that uh, if uh, the mass increases, um, we're going to have uh, more particles, right? Uh, that are ready to react. And then with more particles, we'll have uh, more collisions uh, per unit time. Um, and then as a consequence, uh, the rate of uh, the reaction uh, will go up, right? Will be high. So that's how you'd explain 5.5.